。好，那以下的时间，我想我们就用英文来来来来开始哈。好，那我大家简短解释介绍一下，就请他大概报告大概。是四五十分钟这样子啊，看他的这个长短啊啊，那如果老师中间想要问的话也都可以啊啊 ，OK， 呃呃 ，OK，OK，、okay, ladies and gentlemen， 呃、uh, ，today very happy， 呃呃 ，welcome all of you to join， 呃 ，the oral defense 啊 ，the Miss， 呃呃 ，Rashmi welcome， 啊 ，welcome， 呃 ，Miss welcome， 呃 ，actually she actually come from India， 啊 ，and， 呃、uh, ，she， 呃、uh,。Uh, right now is she is the fourth year of our PhD program, uh, and uh, she study here uh, not only uh, doing the uh, research the this CMOS MEMS technology, but she also uh, try to help me to perform some uh, to do some work about our our most project. Uh. So today uh, she will about he will try to uh, explain and uh, describe detail about his uh, uh, PhD thesis. Uh. The title is uh, Integrated CMOS MEMS Process and its Application to Wrapping Week. Uh, so, Rashmi, you, you have uh, at least 40 minutes to one hour to do the presentation. Okay, okay if you are ready, you can start. Yes, Professor. Okay. Um, a very good afternoon to all the members present today. It is my genuine pleasure to express my deep sense of thanks and gratitude to my advisor, Professor Yang, who overall guided my research work. And I also extend my thanks to Professor Shi, who extended the guidance in the design of the instrumentation amplifier. Without their suggestions, it wouldn't have been possible to complete my work on time. I would like to thank my lab mates for all the help done during the testings. I would like to extend my gratitude to other committee members, uh, Professor Dai, Professor Shi, and Professor Yang for taking out their time from their busy schedule. So today I would like to uh, present my oral defense for the PhD with the topic integrated CMOS MEMS flow sensor and its applications to flapping wing. First of all, I would like to uh, share the table of contents. Uh, in this, we have the introduction, the most MEMS flow sensor development in Taiwan, self-fitting flow sensor design on chip amplifier for flow sensor, flow speed measurement of flapping wing, and lastly, with the conclusion. In the abstract, the main objective of this research work is to design and study CMOS MEMS self-heating flow sensor, which is verified by the wind tunnel testing, and it is also verified by mounting onto the flapping wing to measure its sensitivity. The CMOS sensor is implemented by using UMC 0.18 micrometer one poly six metal process, along with MEMS post process in Taiwan Semiconductor Research Institute. The software used for the design uh, is Cadence software and the material used for our RTD design is polysilicon, appropriate TCR temperature co coefficient resistors, uh, resistance was measured and in our design we connected two RTDs in series and uh, we also have used a standard force gauge data uh, in order to uh, measure the lift and thrust, and it was also processed in the MATLAB. The sensor design alone has a normalized sensitivity of 138 microvolt per volt per meter per second per milliwatt within the speed range of 0 to 10 meter per second. Instrumentation amplifier design was added, whose gain is 30 dB. The overall sensitivity of the sensor was measured and the substantially improved to 1,371 microvolt per volt per meter per second per milliwatt for the flow speed range of 0 to 5 meter per second. This is when after adding the instrumentation amplifier. The sensitivity of the output voltage with respect to the lift is 90 microvolt per volt per gram force and the sensitivity of the output voltage with respect to the net thrust is 
159 microvolt per volt per gram force. Let us move on to the next slide. Here, uh, talking about the introduction, as the current engineering systems like the offshore wind turbines and aircraft getting much more sophisticated and expensive, the on-site measurement technology could benefit these systems with intelligent control and provide bountiful information to the operation and maintenance. Even as early as 1990s, Dr. Ho of UCLA and Dr. Tai of Caltech have ever developed on-site measurement by the microelectromechanical systems to study the low Reynolds number, microchannel flow, and the aerodynamic characteristic of the flapping wing microair vehicles. In continuation to the previous slide, the main sensor used in the previous on-site measurement are mostly pressure sensors, tactile force sensors, and flow sensors. Compared to other MEM sensors, the flow sensors are seldom discussed in Taiwan. Our research team has ever done the Ministry of Science and Technology Taiwan project uh, research work in 2004 about the on-site lift measurement using PVDF sensor, uh, polyvinyl difluoride sensor film on the flapping wings. Coming to the next slide, uh, let us see why we need this on-site sensing technology. The on-site sensing technology is needed in air conditioner for air filter, clock filter detection, leak detection, fluoride detection. It can also be used in burning control for the household fuel cell control for gas mixing. In medical equipments like oxygen concentration device, respirator, breathing qu quantity mo monitor, control for gas supply, measurement of gas consumption. It, is, it can also be used for long-term monitoring of the wind speed of the wind turbine. Recently, the flow sensing control of the respiration machines urgently was in huge demand as the COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, attracts people's attention recently towards the flow sensing control uh, methodology. Coming to the next slide, we have brief history of flapping flight and aerodynamic force measurement. Caltech released the first integrated circuit flexible shear stress sensor scheme in 2003, which can instantly respond to aerodynamics drag. The above mentioned sensor actuator array chip is applied to a two micrometer CMOS MEMS foundry service. The application scenario of the flow sensor in this thesis is different from the general engineering issues and is the on-site in-situ speed measurement regarding the flapping wing flow fields. This idea comes from the in-situ microair vehicle flight control and flow monitoring of UCLA Caltech MEMS group in 1990s. As the size and the total mass of the flapping wing herein are very limited, the flow sensors cannot be bulky but miniaturized by MEMS technology. Prior work, which was conducted for the flapping wings, fluid flow, and aerodynamics forces by our research team, uh, are as uh, follows. In this, uh, I have mentioned as uh, four topics. The first one is the inertial effect on the time average lift of flapping wings. The second one is aerodynamic forces generated by corrugated flapping wing. Third is the check valve design on wing. Fourth is soft film visualization on flapping wing. So let us discuss in the these four topics briefly in the upcoming slides. Talking about the inertial effect on the time average lift of flapping wings, the time average inertial force, which relates to the velocity difference between the final and initial states of a flapping wing motion, were studied. For the periodic flapping motion with identical final and initial velocities, there are no inertial forces contribution to the time average lift. Therefore, the wake capture mechanism proposed by Dickinson justifies more convincing than Sunada's added mass or Sun's 
rapid acceleration at the stroke onset of hovering. The vanishing inertial force to the time average lift is also beneficial to the concise signal processing of lift uh, data from the wind tunnel test. Coming to the next slide, we have the uh, second topic, aerodynamic force forces generated by corrugated flapping wing. Corrugated, corrugated uh, is the wing shape design which has groove or channeled or ridges. For example, the wing of dragonfly, it has corrugated structure on it. So in this research work, uh, it deals with the fabrication of aerodynamic uh, measurement and performance evaluation of the corrugated wing pattern on flapping wing micro air vehicle was uh, it was also studied. It is believed that appropriate corrugated structure on insect wings enhanced aerodynamic performance. A new fabrication process using PDMS, polydimethylene siloxane molding and perylene coating was proposed and implemented onto a 24 centimeter span flapping wing micro air vehicle, which composed of corrugated wing inspired by the dragonfly wing. In the third uh, topic, which is related to the flapping wing, aerodynamic forces and fluid flow is the check valve design on wing. A flapping wing micro air vehicle demands high lift and thrust generation for a desired payload. In view of this work, which focuses on a no novel way of enhancing the lift characteristic through int integrating check valves in the flapping wing membrane. We have these four figures, which illustrates the check valve closing and opening on the wing surface. The figure A is the check valve closing. We can see the check valve uh, close during the downstroke of the flapping. And in the figure B, we can see the check valve opened during the upstroke of the flapping motion. Next, in the figure C, we that, that is the waveform, lift waveform expected without any check valve. In the figure D, that is the expected lift waveform with the check valves. With the check valves, it uh, with the check valve design on the wing, uh, it attend a higher lift according to the according to this research work. In the fourth uh, topic, we have this soft film visualization on flapping wing. Uh, this is the fourth uh, research work we have done in with the prior uh, experiments about the flapping wing, fluid flow, and aerodynamics forces. Uh, this soft film visualization is considered low cost method without any dangerous concern. And compared to the smoke tracing and the PIV, uh, it is uh, particle image velocimetry. It is considered uh, cheaper and uh, less difficult. This work prelimin preliminary presents a soft film visualization technique to capture the unsteady flow fill of the flapping wing micro air vehicle. First, we recorded the, uh, we put the bird onto a bird's wing onto a, a soft film, and then we recorded uh, the videos or images uh, with the help of a high speed camera. And then we later find the reason of interest uh, for n number of frames. And after that, uh, by using the standard color template, we find uh, the closest color match for each of the pixel using mean square error in this case. So after assigning each pixel with the corresponding thickness using the standard color template, we can further uh, store the thickness matrix for each end frame. This is how the soft film visualization on the flapping wing was conducted. Coming to the next slide, we have the relationship between flow speed and flapping wings lift and net thrust. The two ways of investigating the fluid mechanics of flapping wing. One is to use a wind tunnel to measure the global lift and thrust externally. The other is to use the PIV particle image 
velocimetry or flow visualization to show the detailed flow fill internally. These two topics I have just uh, uh, explained in the previous slide about using the wind tunnel uh, to measure the lift and thrust and by analyzing the flow visualization using the soft film was discussed uh, in the previous slide. The simplest way to detect the on-site local speed of a flapping wing is to mount commercial MEMS flow sensors as shown below. This is the image taken from the Sensiron company. Although we could have used this commercially available MEMS flow sensor, why we gave up is that because of its bulky size and it was uh, not appropriate to keep onto the wing surface of our uh, flapping wing micro air vehicle. Therefore, we, we uh, designed our own MEMS flow sensor, uh, which is smaller compared to the commercially available flow sensor design and um, the direct integration with the commercial uh, available flow sensor is not feasible in our current study of the flapping wing micro air vehicle. That is why we have developed our own uh, flow sensor with minimal size and weight. CMOS MEMS flow sensor development. Talking about the literature survey on CMOS MEMS technology, when humans entered the 21st century from the 20th century, cross-sector integration of science and technology is constantly emerging in conjunction with the train of miniaturization, multifunctionality and precision. The first to propose the concept of microelectromechanical systems or microsystem technology was physicist Richard Feynman. With the Richard Feynman speech, there is plenty of room at the bottom, attracted many people's attentions to small scale science and technology. Even in 1982, silicon was uh, called as the mechanical material by Peterson's, uh, which, which wrote a famous review article. And Yes, coming to the next slide, we have the evolution of CMOS MEM technology in Taiwan. I am very fortunate that I could do my research work in Taiwan, where we can access the Cadence software free of cost in the educational universities. I remember in my home country, we had to pay several thousands of rupees just to attend a few days workshop just to learn the Cadence. I'm thankful to Taiwan for such a good initiative where students and research teams could invent and innovate things with such kind of facilities provided by the Taiwan governments, Taiwan, Taiwanese companies and universities uh, with uh, whose cooperation uh, just give us a huge uh, opportunity for the students to learn new things. So uh, in this case, I would like to men mention the United Microelectronics Corporation, which was founded as Taiwan's first IC fabrication company in 1980 as a spin off from the government sponsored Industrial Technology Research Institute, also known as E3 in Sinchu, Taiwan. TSMC uh, is another multinational semiconductor contract manufacturing company whose name is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing uh, Company, also well known as TSMC. Uh, it is the design company founded in 1987 on 300 millimeter wafers. Currently, TSMC has silicon lithography on node sizes ranging from 0.13 micrometer to 5 nanometer and ranked the number one IC foundry providers in the world. In continuation to the previous slide, the research on the CMOS MEMS devices in Taiwan were started in National Taiwan University by asking help of CIC, that is Chip Implementation Center CMOS Foundry, to guide students in IC design courses held in CIC for 1994 summer. 
At the end of 1995, by the help of CIC and TSMC, the NTU group successfully developed the first CMOS MEMS mechanical sensors, including a piezoresistive pressure sensor and a capacitive accelerometer with a switch capacitor circuit for capacitance measurement. The, the first two mechanical sensors are with the chip areas of 2 mm cross, 3 mm and 3 mm cross, 3 mm respectively. The educational CMOS foundry service provided by TSRI uh, in the present scenario is shown in this slide. Uh, this figure represents the step-by-step -step fabrication process of the CMOS MEMS foundry process. In the first step, uh, it starts with the position of the polysilicon above the substrate. Secondly, the CMOS layer uh, with additional pattern of contact layer is created. In the third step, the standard CMOS layer with amorphous silicon dioxide and metal 1 to metal 6, metal 7 as hard mass and a passivation layer is created. In the fourth step, the deposition of the thick photoresist takes place to perform the patterning. And um, in the fifth step, the anisotropic silicon oxide etching is performed. In the sixth step, the isotropic silicon etching is performed using xenon difluoride. The design flow of the CMO sensor is uh, presented with a flow chart in this slide. First, while designing the flow sensor, uh, first uh, to design a flow sensor, we try to understand the CMOS IC process and the CMOS uh, understand the sensor design principle. If the, if the design idea is fit, then we continue it with the next step. Otherwise, we go back to the initial stage. So if the design idea is fitted, then we proceed uh, for determining the specification of the IC or the, uh, we determine the specification of the sensor. For the IC, we do the simulation using H-SPICE Spectre ADS. For, uh, for, for the simulation of the sensor, we can do the simulation using the software like COMSOL, ANSYS, etc. If, if the design, uh, if it fits the design specification, we further continue. Uh, we further continue to draw the layout diagram using Cadence Virtuoso. So uh, the IC layout and uh, the sensor layout can be drawn in the Cadence Virtuoso. After finishing the complete layout diagram for the IC, the design rule check, layout versus schematic, ERC, etc. are performed. For the uh, sensor layout, uh, the DRC alone, uh, the DRC design rule check verification alone is enough for the verification process. If the, after the verification process is passed, we further go ahead with the tap out process of the, uh, from the CMOS uh, foundry service. In, after that, we uh, we tend to know is the post processing required. If if post process is required, uh, a user can do his or her own post processing if a, a proper facility of clean room is provided. Otherwise, we can go ahead with the CMOS foundry post process. After completion of the post process, the IC packaging will be done. And after the formation of the product, uh, we continued with the uh, testing uh, by uh, using the experimental setups. Coming to the next slide, we have the self-heating flow sensor. Why we call self-heating is that we haven't used any heater aside of our flow sensor most of the conventional flow sensor use heater aside the RTDs, uh, re resistive temperature detectors. Uh, beside the RTDs, we uh, they use the heater. But in our case, uh, we we haven't used any heater. Therefore, we call it as self-heating flow sensor. In this uh, figure, figure A and B. Figure A represents the uh, 
cross sectional uh, cross section of the current CMOS process provided by TSRI and UMC. The, and in the second figure B, this is the alternative way. Earlier, uh, the CIC, it was a design violation as it doesn't have any policy leakage in the MEMS open reason. So we took the understanding permission to keep the policy leakage in the MEMS open reason for our design uh, purpose. So coming to the next step, uh, next slide, we have the transfer block of the flow sensor operation. The primary level of strategy implementation is shown in this block diagram. The design depiction of the sensor is first calculated theoretically by setting up the desired values, which is the conception and constructions of the framework that underpins the major operation plan and its subsequent execution. It decreases the resistance value when the velocity is gradually increased, creating an unbalanced voltage output. As we can see in this block diagram, when an air velocity is uh, passes over the self heating flow sensor, it creates a differential temperature, which in return change the uh, different uh, resistance value, which pass across the bridge circuit and the voltage change occurs at the output, which we measured as the sensitivity. Coming to the working principle, based on the principle of heat transfer, by one dimensional steady state thermal resistance analysis of heat conduction between polysilicon on substrate and heat convection on polysilicon resistor on MEMS cavity. As temperature changes, its resistance value changes. The CMOS sensor design is made using U18 MEMS process, which is combination of 0.18 UMC, uh, 0, 0 0.18 micrometer, one poly, six metal process, along with MEMS post process. Our intelligible yet coherent design is unique from the other existing flow sensors because most of the uh, flow sensors design, they either use the resistors, uh, both all the RTDs above the substrate, or they use all the um, RTDs above the MEMS cavity. But in our case, one RTD directly lies above the substrate and one RTD uh, lies uh, above the cavity, cavity reason. This is how uh, our design is different from the other people. One, one resistor, uh, one, one resistor uh, performs the heat conductions between polysilicon on the substrate, that is R1, and the other resistor R2 uh, performs heat convection uh, due to the it's because it is it it lies above the cavity reason. Coming to the next slide, we have cross sectional view of the polysilicon on on substrate and cavity. The left side figure is the is where the polysilicon polysilicon lies above the substrate directly, and in the uh, right figure we can see the polysilicon uh, lies above the cavity reason so by one dimensional steady state thermal resistance analysis of heat conduction about silicon on substrate and uh, by uh, mems cavity these models are assumed the heat transfer rate which is represented by q in this equation the heating bias power from the RTD diffuses to the ambient by ways of convective cooling on the top and conduction in the bottom. So uh, the, the, we can see the length of the silicon uh, divided by thermal conductivity of silicon uh, multiplied with the area which is which lies parallel to the um, to the the length of the metal oxide with the thermal conductivity of the metal oxide which is multiplied uh, with the area so um, 
it, it, it also applies the four years law, which states that heat flow in solid is proportional to the negative gradient in the temperature and the area uh, through which the heat flows. So the um, temperature difference, the temperature difference T1 minus uh, T infinity is actually the delta T, that is the differential temperature, and uh, T2, T2 minus T infinity is the temperature difference across the R2 resistor. I repeat, the T1 uh, minus delta uh, T infinity is the temperature across the R1, that is polysilicon just above the substrate, and the temperature difference across the R2, uh, the, re the polysilicon resistor, which lies above the cavity, is T2 minus T infinity. The one dimensional thermo, thermo resistance analysis here. In this case, the heat transfer rate, which is indicated with the H infinity, relates to the U infinity, that is the free stream velocity by laminar boundary layer theory as shown in these two equations, 3 and 3a, subjected to a flat plate under medium value of Reynolds number. The, the medium uh, value of Reynolds number is considered in this case. Substituting these equations in the previous slide, uh, equation 1 and 2, we can correlate the temperature difference and the flow speed. So the one dimensional thermal resistance analysis model of the RTD R1 with temperature one on the uh, on silicon substrate and one dimensional uh, thermal resistance model of, of the RTD R2 with uh, the temperature two on the floating MEMS area with the air gap is uh, shown in this figure. In continuation to the previous slides, um, we assume in this equation 4a and 4b, we have taken the R0 value as 1 kilo ohm of 1 RTD with temperature coefficient resistance. The TCR, the temperature coefficient resistance, is the relative change of resistance per degree of the temperature. Here, we have used 2.97 exponential minus 3 per degree C. Uh, and as the flow speed increases across the bias RTDs, both RTDs have temperature drop, but the cooling effect on R1 on the silicon substrate is better than R2 on the MEMS cavity with the air gap thermal isolation. So the temperature differences of delta T2, which is equal to T2 minus T infinity of R2 is greater than delta T1 which is equal to T1, uh, the temperature across the resistor one, uh, minus T infinity of R1. The values of R1 and R2 after applications of the flow speed is shown above in this uh, equations. In the next slide, we, we have this TCR graph and the specification about our self-heating flow sensor design. The length of the R1 and R2 is 354 microvolt, uh, uh, sorry, micrometer, and the width of the R1 and R2 is 3 micrometer. Free stream velocity uh, we have taken from 0 to 10 meter per second. The supply voltage taken for the testing of the uh, circuit uh, for, for the uh, for our flow sensor is 1.8 volt. The theoretical calculation of the flow sensor is estimated as the graph shown in this slide. The layout diagram of our flow sensor, which is made using the Cadence software, uh, Cadence Virtuso, is shown in this slide. We have in our initial uh, first generation IC fabrication, we have uh, also put some dummy dummy uh, designs just to check uh, 
performance of including the heater circuit. And also we have also designed some uh, uh, flow sensor without the MEMS open reason. We could not get any uh, output result where we have designed without the MEMS open reason. We could get the output result only from the design which included the MEMS open reason, which was designed using the cavity. We also used uh, the scanning electron microscopic uh, inspection to find out the depth, also the hole size. Uh, this facility was used from the chemi chem chemistry engineering department. I am thankful to them. So with, with this, we could see the uh, eight cross eight micrometer edge holes. It gives uh, it gives us the 9.09 .09 plus minus 0.28 micrometer on CMOS layer in the uh, real scenario, which we have earlier designed for eight micrometer cross eight micrometer edge holes. Secondly, we can see the depth of the cavity of the MEMS open region is around 44.94 micrometer depth. We also have taken some images using the confocal optical microscope of our flow sensor design. These are the pictures that were captured using the confocal optical microscope. We conducted the wind tunnel test um, first, earlier in the first testing, our design was uh, using the very big size PCB board. We further uh, reduced the size using the printed circuit board by soldiering, by minimizing the use of the wires. Um, and then we conducted the wind tunnel experiment. These are the values of the output voltage we have uh, got it from two sensors and um, the first one um, this in in the table we can see the output readings output voltage readings uh, from 0 to 15 meter per second in the theoretical and experimental graphs comparing the theoretical and experimental graphs in this slide we can see the result is almost Similar, similar or comparable as what we have predicted by calculating theoretically and what we have observed after the final experimental test that was conducted after the tap out process of the first generation flow sensor. As we got some results uh, from the flow sensor alone, we have presented a posture in the transducer conference 2021. So uh, I, I was privileged to present a poster in this renowned conference. The experience was phenomenal. Uh, like I have attended a lot of con conferences virtually as well as physically, but this was different because um, in universal and Im immersive virtual virtual world i have i had to create an avatar for myself and they took me to an island like places even though i could not uh, go to the physical location they created an uh, island like place and then after entering it into that island um they took us to a building a big hole type space and my presentation belongs to block three Venus here. After entering to the this block, oh, I can see a lot of posters presented there. Like uh, what we physically felt, uh, it was not lesser feeling than that because uh, I can travel through the, I, I can travel through virtually and then um, ask, uh, make any inquiry to the other people uh, about your work and other people also uh, can visit me and ask the question as they come near to my poster i can see their face i can uh, listen to them uh, without any disturbances so this uh, virtual conference was a, a whole new experience for me 
I kind of feel uh, like a um, metaverse uh, sensation as I was allowed to walk and watch others presenters without any difficulties. On chip amplifier for flow sensor. For this topic, I would like to um, make a heartfelt gratitude to Professor Shi of uh, Electrical Engineering Department for his relentless guidance towards the successful fabrication of the instrumentation amplifier uh, in order to improve the signal to noise ratio of our flow sensor uh, output. The instrumentation amplifier shown in the figure below can amplify the output signal of the above mentioned uh, CMOS MEMS flow sensor, which I have mentioned in the previous slides. Men MEMS flow sensors are often based on temperature detection. For most materials, the electrical resistivity changes with temperature. The instrumentation amplifier is a type of differential amplifier which eliminates the need for in input impedance matching and thus making the amplifier particularly suitable for use in measurement and test equipment. For the design of the instrumentation amplifier, uh, the pre-layout simulation and the post-layout simulation was conducted for uh, measuring the magnitude, phase margin, and the common mode gain. This is the post-layout simulation used uh, to, after the completed layout STR basis. The layout of the instrumentation amplifier is again made with the Cadence software using the same uh, UMC 0.18 micrometer process. Uh, using the Cadence Vertuso software, this layout was made. After, after completing the successful uh, layout verification, we have uh, integrated the instrumentation amplifier and our flow sensor design in a single chip. Here you can also see the calorimetric uh, flow sensor. Uh, this design uh, was made for Professor YK Lee of Hong Kong University and Science and Technology. The design idea belongs to Professor Lee, but uh, the layout, making the layout and performing the tap out process uh, was held by me for the calor calorimetric flow sensors. The integrated IC, integrated uh, uh, sensor and the instrumented, uh, instrumentation amplifier was uh, packaged using the SB40 pin package provided by TSRI UMC. This is the connection for the SB40 pin package. After receiving the uh, after receiving the chip from the TSRI UMC, we further undergo the testing of the instrumentation amplifier just to check the gain of the instrumentation amplifier. In the setup, we use the oscilloscope, waveform generator, multimeter, uh, power supply. The frequency versus gain graph is shown uh, in this figure where we measure uh, 30 dB gain at 10 kilohertz. Next, we have also first, um, before mounting onto the flapping wing, we have ever tested our flow sensor inside the wind tunnel. In, inside the wind tunnel, when we test, uh, we can see uh, the result as shown in this figure. Uh, the graph plotted is, is uh, voltage output versus the wind speed. In this, the sensitivity from 138 microvolt per volt per meter per second was increased to 1371 microvolt per volt per meter per second per milliwatt. Coming to the next slide, we have flow speed measurement of flapping wing. So, a flapping wing microair vehicles demands high lift and thrust 
generation to achieve good flight maneuverability. Researchers regarding the flapping wing micro air vehicle uh, improvement need the on site lift information and uh, on site thrust information. In this case, MEMS flow sensor on a flapping wing can be helpful in detecting the real time uh, lift and thrust. The conventional MEMS flow sensor design is composed of floating plate with resistive temperature detectors, as I mentioned earlier, heated by another heater aside. So um, further, this type of CMOS flow sensor will be promising for uh, measuring the device for various range of uh, flow speed and different kinds of applications. We further requested the TSRI and UMC for more number of uh, chips so that we can uh, do the experimental test using uh, the SB18 package. The SB18 package dimension is shown in this slide and after reducing the uh, after eliminating the extra PCB board connection after reducing the package size the weight of the overall uh, design to put uh, above the above the flapping wing now measures only nine grams uh, including the wire connection, including the integrated chip, including the PCB board. Now it measures only nine gram. The flow sensor kept on the wing with different configurations is shown in this figure. Uh, we have performed two types of tests. There is A1 uh, uh, configuration A1 and A2 and configuration B1, B2. This is the output of the uh, first configuration A1, A2. A uh, the calibrated, it represents the calibrated output voltage with response to the change in flapping, different flapping frequencies. And um, in this case, we have also uh, conducted the test for the B1 and B2 to measure the calibrated output voltage, which is shown in the next slide. However, compared to the A1 and A2, B1, B2 didn't perform very well. Uh, it might be the reason that uh, when we were conducting the experiment, there was uh, some failure in the uh, mechanism due, due to the, uh, when we were conducting the experiment again and again, but uh, before the mechanism uh, failure, the A1, A2 was successfully conducted with good uh, output result. In this slide, we have amplified flow sensor signal output from the flapping wing motion. The stroke angle uh, for this type of design for the flapping mechanism that we have used is 174 degree. The uh, stroke angle means the wing tip, uh, the angle between the wing tip on the uppermost and the lowermost, and uh, the angle between the wing tip of the uppermost and the lowermost uh, is considered as the stroke angle. That is 174 degree for our mechanism that we have used on the flapping wing micro air vehicle. The amplified flow sensor signal output from the flapping wing motion of configuration A1 with A and a2, the flapping frequency that we have measured are 1.23 hertz, second 1.3 hertz, 1.4 hertz, 1.46 hertz, and 1.5 uh, hertz and 1.6 hertz respectively. Similar to the uh, previous slide, this is the amplified flow sensor signal output from the flapping wing motion with the same mechanism with the stroke angle 174 degree with configuration B1 and B2 with this for the same flapping frequency. The lift and thrust measurement using force gauge without any free stream velocity were also conducted for different flapping frequencies similar to the measurement we have done earlier. And 
the mechanism design used for this force gauge uh, data collection is the same mechanism that we have used earlier. And uh, in this graph, we can see the lift, the lift uh, data plotted in accordance to the wind speed and also the thrust data plotted with respect to the wind speed, change in wind speed. The graph for various output voltage voltages subjected to the lift force is shown in this figure. This is for configuration A1 uh, and A2. We can see the output voltage is uh, gradually decreasing with increasing uh, number of lift. The unit of lift is gram force. In the next slide, we have the graph for various output voltages subjected to the thrust force. This is again, uh, the previous graph was the measurement of output voltage with respect to lift. Now this is the uh, output voltage with respect to the thrust for the A1 and A2 configuration uh, when the chip was mounted onto the flapping wing. From this study, from this comparison of the lift and thrust forces, the standard force gauge data of the flapping wing were collected at the same time with the CMOS MEMS flow sensor output. The sensitivity of the output voltage with respect to the lift is measured as 90 microvolt per volt per gram force and the net thrust is measured as 159 microvolt per volt per gram force. The test result of the lift data and the net thrust data shows that the CMOS MEMS flow sensor signals on the flapping wing is more similar to the net thrust signal rather than the lift signal from the standard force gauge. Also, the CMOS MEMS flow sensor here is not only sensitive enough to detect the aerodynamic forces of a flapping wing, it also behaves with a characteristic of shear stress sensor. We have further processed the force gauge data for the uh, for reducing the noise we have used the cutoff frequency um, and it the data was processed uh, in the math lab this uh, graphs represents the lift row data of flapping wing micro air vehicle with the flapping frequency which was mentioned earlier a low pass filter is a filter that allows signal below a cutoff frequency known as pass band and it attenuates the signal above the cutoff frequency known as the stop band. This um, the MATLAB process data was performed for the thrust signal as well for the same flapping frequency. These are the graphs that were uh, observed after processing in the MATLAB software. Coming to the conclusion, the first summary about the flow sensor is that it preliminary, uh, preliminarily the theoretical sensitivity was calculated as 113 microvolt per volt per meter per second per milliwatt, which is near to the measured sensitivity. The sensor design alone has a normalized sensitivity of 138 microvolt per volt per meter per second per milliwatt within the speed range of 0 to 10 meter per second. One RTD dissipates 0.81 milliwatt of power. The sensor size is small as 300 cross 250 micrometer square. Coming to the next conclusion, we have the summary about the instrumentation amplifier. The gain of the instrumentation amplifier is measured to be 30 dB under the bandwidth of 10 kHz. The benefits of adding the amplifier are to improve the signal to noise ratio and lower the voltage noise density. 
Gain of the 20 dB was observed with the integrated on-chip test inside the wind tunnel. The overall sensitivity of the self-heating flow sensor was measured and substantially improved to 1,371 microvolt per volt per meter per second per milliwatt for the flow speed range of 0 to 5 meter per second. The sensitivity of the lift sensing is 90 uh, microvolt per volt per gram force and the sensitivity of the net thrust sensing is 159 microvolt per volt per gram force with the supply voltage of uh, 1.8 volt and reference voltage as 1 volt and the total current consumption for the instrumentation amplifier is 1.335 milliamps. In the fourth point, the instrumentation amplifier design alone uh, occupies the area of 250 cross 350 micrometer square, whereas the total area occupied by the instrumentation amplifier and sensor integration is as small as 550 cross 600 micrometer square. Coming to the uh, last conclusion, I would like to summarize the flapping wing uh, with flow sensor design. The standard force gauge data of the flapping wing were collected at the same time with the CMOS sense MEMS flow sensor output. The sensitivity of the output voltage with respect to the lift is 90 microvolt per volt per gram force and the net thrust is measured as 159 microvolt per volt per gram force. The test result of the lift data and the net thrust data shows that CMOS MEMS flow sensor signals on flapping wing is more similar to net thrust signal rather than the lift signal. In conclusion, the CMOS MEMS flow sensor uh, not only very sensitive enough to detect the aerodynamic forces for, of a flapping wing, it also behaves as a shear stress sensor. The future work, which can be continued, uh, are it can be this kind of flow sensor can be applied on the wind turbine blade uh, to study its uh, flow, fluid flow structure. Secondly, a, a more flexible and light PCB board design for the application on smaller MAV can be created. Third, uh, as our flow sensor was more uh, sensitive to the thrust measurement, net measurement of the net thrust force. In future, we can also combine with a pressure sensor, which will be more sensitive in measuring the lift data of the flapping wing micro air vehicle. So when pressure sensor and flow sensors are combined together, uh, the lift and net thrust force can be measured simultaneously. Uh, these are the journal and conferences publications I have uh, done during my uh, research work under the guidance of Professor Yang and Professor Shi. I would like to acknowledge uh, the Taiwan's Ministry of Science and Technology uh, for providing us the support to do the work on the flow sensor. I would also like to uh, thank the Taiwan Semiconductor Research Institute and United uh, or United Microelectronics Corporation. Uh, their, their service will, are highly appreciated. The technical help from my lab mates, uh, Chandra Sekar, Vivek, jo uh, Nitis, uh, Veera, Ken and Abhishek are all acknowledged. And I also thanks to the chemistry engineering department for providing us the scanning electron microscopic service. Once again, I would like to thanks all, and I would like to extend my gratitude to my professor uh, Lung Jae Yang, who overall guided my research work. And I would like to say thanks to Professor Shi of Electrical Engineering Department, who extended the guidance in the design of instrumentation amplifier. Without their support and suggestions, it wouldn't have been possible for me to uh, get this result, uh, which I have received until now. 
I would like to uh, extend my gratitude to other committee members, Professor Dai, Professor Shi, and Professor Yang Weibin for taking time out from your busy schedule to be present as my committee members. Thank you so much. Okay, okay thank okay, you for the you. presentation, uh, 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 Rashmi. Okay, so in, in, in the following, uh, I would like to invite all the uh, committee members one by one to uh, ask some question and uh, let Rashmi to answer. Yeah. Uh, how about starting from, from Professor Dai? Uh, <clears throat> I, I have a su suggestion. Uh, please take, take a break by me. Minute. Yes, Professor. Thank you.不好意思,應該讓大家中間休息,還是大家不要先休息一下,然後待會再回來問,好不好?我我我先去休息完。沒關係,其他我也沒關係,如果你覺得聽應該報告的比較長一點,所以如果想要去洗個手沒問題,你
takes place in the sensor uh, re resistor R2 because it is kept above the MEMS open region and it has the shallow trans isolation STI to prevent the damage during the uh, isotropic etching, the STI protected the R2. So due to this uh, different structures, the cooling effect on the R1 and cooling effect on the R2 is different, which leads to the uh, production of the differential voltage output. Okay, so you have flow flow sensor, may uh, one heat heater and the two tem temperature sensor, right? I didn't. I di we didn't use any heater circuit. Heater? Our our R one and R two X as the heater itself. Oh, right. Uh, where where have the power in, input can can you point point out? Uh, from, we input from, the power from the the pic, picture. I we input the power from this V naught. V naught is the V in 1.8 volt power supply we provide during the operation. So you heat her in the tem, tem, temperature sensor are come come by together. Yes. All right. Uh, well, well, the tem, temperature one and the temperature two. Temperature one is uh, related to the R1 and uh -huh. temperature R2 is the temperature across the resistor above the MEMS cavity region. OK, so do you, do you evaluate the power, power consumption? The uh, power consumption for one RTD is 0 0.8 milliwatt. Uh, how do you if if value in in your case? Uh, by uh, analyzing the Ohm's law, V is equal to I R. Uh huh. And then we further calculate P is equal to V square by R. And we calculate across the power across the R one and R two, and each of them uh, the uh, it uh, has the power dissipation of 0 0.8 milliwatt each. So okay. if, if we if we uh, consider the overall, then it will become 1.6 milliwatt. Okay, I I should play, play the move to page, page 26. Yes, Professor. Yes, this is the joy draw show the Curve is the long linear. Uh, why, why, why is the long, long linear curve? Uh, we have considered each and every uh, single point during the calculation. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, we have considered the smallest point value during the theoretical calculation. Uh, that's why it is non-linear. Okay. Uh, what for, for, for formula do you, you use the uh, simul, sim, simulation the result? For this? For, it, for formula. Hmm? Which formula I use for the simulation? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, let me show you previous previous page. Actually, you need to combine these three page. OK, Professor. Oh. Just... We have used this formula. Oh. For the thermal uh, one dimensional steady state thermal resistance analysis of heat conduction, and uh, that is the equation one, and for the heat convection is equation two. And then further, um, we correlate the H infinity, uh, that is the heat transfer rate, using this Nuzzle's number, we correlate the heat transfer rate 
to the um, u infinity that is the free stream velocity by the laminar boundary layer theory so you get get a linear curve in page 26 yes professor okay uh please, please come back to uh, uh, page, page 26 so okay we we will come come back to the head test uh please uh, move to the 31 okay uh, the te test really draws the name it's the name uh, can you tell to me what do we do it's the the difference um in this case we have measured the certain points only starting from uh, we have uh, only four points as you can see um the first point is uh, is the voltage me measure without any uh, wind supply uh, wind velocity that is at the zero and the second point is measured at five meter per second the third point is measured at 10 meter per second and uh, the fourth point is measured in 15 meter per second and we haven't uh, see uh, much of the changes in between those uh, one two i mean one starting from zero like let us say from zero zero to five meter per second there should there should be some uh, points which we have considered during the theoretical calculations but during the measurement of the experimental test we only uh, get the points from zero and then five meter per second and then 10 meter per second okay i can see the simulation result and the te tester result has a bigger deep, deeper in that so can you give give me a better uh, better explanation? Okay, so the theoretical calculation, um, the difference between the theoretical calculation and the experimental data uh, differs around eighteen percent, eighteen percent. Like uh, the theoretical calculations measure one hundred and seventeen. Um, 117 microvolt per volt meter per second per milliwatt. Rashmi, you don't need to mention about the difference about the sensitivity. Please mention why why your theoretical is not linear and why your measurement is linear. Because the theoretical for the theoretical calculation, we have uh, considered the smallest value of points in between. Um, in between the zero, for example, zero to one or zero to two, we have considered the smallest uh, values during the calculations, the smallest data. Really? <laughs> I don't see so. Maybe you, you, you need a different thing, thing, thing about it, but the different, it's a so big. Okay, Professor, I, I, I will study, uh, I will try to have deeper knowledge about this case. Okay. Uh, I, I have the, another que question. If, pa pa if possible, please add a tab table into the URC sheet, sheets to summarize the performance of the flow, flow sensor in, in, include the, the sensor typity, Pao Pao Khan Shang Xin and the Yu Yu Xin Zhuang. Right? Uh, Add a, a ta ta table into your thesis. Into my thesis? <laughs> uh, please add a, a ta table into your thesis. She says to summarize the performance of the flow sensor. 
Okay. Right. So uh, I have added the table to yeah. summarize the performance of the flow sensor. Yes, Professor. Yeah. Uh, yes. The ta table need, need to in, include the uh, sensitivity power consumption and the using range. Okay. The table needs um, the table needs sensitivity range and uh, the power consumption range. Right. Okay. Uh, be better if 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 that possible please come compared to the other bit bit better ratio for the performance. Okay. Okay, professor. I will add. I play please move to. The page is uh, 34. Page number 34. Uh, from the zero, we, we, we can know, I, I can know the game is uh, 668, right? The game yeah. Yes, is, yes, Professor, 68. 68. Uh, yeah. This, this is the simul simulation zero, right? Yes, Professor. Uh, please move, move to the 40 patch, patch 40. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, come, come back to the simul simulated game. Uh, yes. The te test again, it, it's a road just uh, 30, 30. I want, want to know the why. Um, there, there are several factors contributing in the decrease in the day, uh, uh, decrease in the measurement of the gain, so, such as like after the fabrication, um, there might be some, some mismatch in the value of the resistance that we have designed and the actual resistance which comes after the fabrication when there is some uh, mismatch in the value, we may uh, face uh, decrease in the gain value. Ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I, oh, I, I don't see, see so. <laughs> uh, may, maybe you, you can, can consider uh, about deep, deeper. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, if possible, please, please, uh, please add the uh, table into your sheet to so summarize the performance of the MPI circuit. Okay, so I need to add a table of uh, summary for the amplifier circuit. Uh, the per performance uh, in in, include the uh, game must be watching uh, noise, noise. Okay, Professor, I will noise, add. Noise, she, 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 uh, she cannot do noise, noise, do it, do your free frequency bandwidth. Okay, Professor. Okay. Okay, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm I'm no no question. Uh, Professor Yang, I'm finished. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, uh, Professor Tai. Thank you very much. Okay, so Professor, he he point out a very two uh, two very important uh, problems. So first, we need to try to explain more detail about the reason why you experiment data quite different from your simulation or your theoretical value. Okay, professor. Mm, yes, professor. I, I will try to explain more in the thesis. In the next, uh, I would like to invite uh, Professor uh, Professor uh, Suen Bin. Uh, professor, try try to uh, please ask you a question. Okay. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to uh, echo Professor Dai's comment about your comparisons. So uh, regarding the instrument amplifier. If you go to the um, page 40 of your slide, 
Yeah, if you want to compare your experiment with your um, model or theory, it's better to make the horizontal axis on the same scale. For example, you are showing the kilohertz. Yes. You know this page, but it's different from the other page, so that you it's difficult for you to compare the bandwidth. That's that's the part you are missing. So maybe you are talking about again at a different frequency. Okay. And and also the missing part is your signal to noise ratio. You mentioned that that's quite com uh, important in your conclusion. You mentioned that the signal to noise ratio is highly improved after the instrument amplifier, but we never saw the numbers. Do do you have the number by hand? Um. What I what I observe is that um, because earlier the flow sensor alone could measure only the 138 microvolt as the sensitivity uh, after including the instrumentation amplifier uh, due to the improvement of the signal signal to noise ratio the sensitivity was uh, improved 10 times but I do not have the value of the SNR. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I bet you might have to measure the noise forward so that you can report the signal to noise ratio, but uh, um, I know it's difficult or troublesome after your defense. So, uh, well, it, it's better to, to leave this to Professor Young's judgment whether okay. you should uh, uh, provide this number or not. It might be difficult. Okay. Um, Another big issue of your dissertation is that, uh, as Professor Dai mentioned, the, the comparison between the theory and your experiment. So I'd like to ask the same question, but from different perspective. Uh, could you go to page 31st? Yeah, so. Um, yeah, of course, from the previous discussion, uh, the big issue is the linearity and the linear measurement. Um, so, and also I disagree that you use your explanation by saying you didn't have high resolution of your measurement. So there's a mismatch between these two figures. Um, but because on the left hand side, the theory, theoretical part, I believe uh, it's quite often in sensors, you have two linear regions. One is high sensitivity, the other starts to saturate. Yes. Typical, so that you can get a dynamic range of your sensor. That means you know the limit of the highest flow speed you can measure. But on the right hand side, it seems you don't have a limit. Right, that's not possible unless your measurement is already in the saturation region. So you might have much higher sensitivity somewhere else as some wind speed you, you need to categorize. That's one, one part. The other thing is that um, because it's theoretically it's nonlinear, how do you define your the theoretical sensitivity? Um, the theoretical sensitivity, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it was uh, calculated using the equations. Yeah, this uh, thermal resistance analysis of heat conduction about the silicon on the substrate and the heat convection of the silicon polysilicon on the MEMS cavity region using these equations uh, one two three four uh, in equation three uh, the graph was generated right right but uh, you know because in in when you define a sensitivity it's within some linear region but the, your theory shows it's nonlinear so within which region of the flow speed do you define the sensitivity because you're, you're going to draw a straight line 
in that theory. Right. Yes. Yeah, let's go to uh, page 30 first. Yes. Yeah. yeah, on the left hand side, the sensitivity means you are you are drawing a straight line on the left hand side figure and the slope of that straight line is the sensitivity. Yeah, so uh, for drawing the straight line, uh, I should have considered taking uh, one single point uh, each at 0, 5, 10 meter per second respectively, rather than collecting the uh, sensitivity value at one at 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 and so on. So, uh, Reshmi, Reshmi, actually, Professor Su's question, uh, he tried to ask you, what is the proper flow range you want to use? Uh, right now, in your original flow sensor theory, uh, they are exactly, I have told you, it is exactly nonlinear. So linear means if you use, want to use it as a linear sensor, you need to define some flow speed region. For yes. here, for our case here, our flow region actually is, is probably maybe from five to 15 meter per second. Yes. <laughs> more, more linear, right? More linear. Yes, right? yes. High speed region, uh, the professor says the high, high flow region will be more linear. So okay. actually we, we actually we draw a, a straight line over there and try to use the data from the five minute five meter per second to 15 meter per second try to do the curve fitting try to right fit a proper sensitivity right, yes with the minimal error yeah so 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 actually you you you, you need to do this explanation more detail in your thesis and try to conclude that why your sensitivity is 149 or something like that, right? Okay, okay Professor. Yeah, that, that's a good point. So on that, I'd like to suggest you remove the first points, uh, uh, namely the zero wind speed on the right-hand side. Yeah. Because that only shows the uh, offset of your sensor, but uh, nothing with nothing about your sensitivity. Yeah, okay. correct. correct. Okay, so so that uh, your right hand side figure will be consistent with what Professor Young just mentioned. Okay, Professor, I, I got your point. Okay, so also another question on this on the left hand side figure. So at zero frequency, at sorry, at zero flow speed, mm. uh, what's your output voltage, and uh, what does that mean? Um, before at 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 zero flow speed after application of 1.8 volt without any uh, flow speed wind speed provided inside the wind tunnel the measurement is around 0 0.924 and in another case uh, the measurement output voltage from the bridge circuit is uh, 0 0.924 and 0 0.9 Four, three. Yeah, that's something I don't understand uh, on the left hand side because it's it's purely theoretical. So at zero fuel speed, you should get 0.9 voltage yeah. because there's no offset. But how comes everything is above 0.9 volt? Um, that is because the reason when we uh, initially designed the flow uh, resistors for the flow sensor, we took the one kilo ohm as the resistor resistors value. But after the fabrication process, after the tap out process, after receiving, when we measured the uh, resistors value, it was not exactly as one kilo ohm. Right. So, so when you do the theory, you already applied the real resistance from your circuits. Yes, Professor. OK, but yeah, I, I think you'd better mention that in your thesis because otherwise I'll think it's purely theoretical. And also okay. you need to provide uh, 
uh, Reynolds number and the parental number. Okay. What are those numbers? Yes, Professor. Yeah, do, do you have those numbers by hand? Um, we considered low Reynolds number right. uh, for the laminar flow and the Prandtl number. I I have written in my thesis or no, no. Actually, I, I couldn't find it in your thesis. So I I, I have written the Prandtl number zero point seven uh, three. The Prandtl number that mm -hmm. I have written zero point seven three. Okay. So, so does that justify your coefficient of six uh, point six something in your equation? Uh, maybe you could, we could go to your previous page. The one shows your equations. Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so could you justify your coefficient of point six six four in equation three a and the and also you are using the correct expression of equation three because you claim the Reynolds number. Um, the point six six coefficient uh, direct, directly comes from the formula of uh, this nuzzle number. Right. I thought it depends on Prandtl's number. Uh, the Prandtl's number uh, is another uh, value that is 0 0.7. As right, right, right. I mean, this coefficient somehow I think it's. It's not. Uh, I mean, it might change based on your Prandtl's number. It has different coefficients. Yeah. I, actually, I can explain more. Now. Uh, yeah. me, perfect ground is double E. So actually, he never took the oh. course about heat transfer. So okay. even more about the convection, it's very little about very little knowledge about heat transfer. So okay. actually, this topic for him for her is, is, is something difficult. Uh, this 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 uh this equation is proposed by me. Uh, the coefficient zero point sixty four actually is is come from the boundary layer theory applied to the flat plate. Mm -hmm. A flat plate. So, so uh, actually, for our sensor configuration, huh, it's not exactly true. Huh? But uh, I think I think it it's it, it's only for the first. Uh, I mean, what feasibility study. So I just let her select this simple model, simple equation huh, in non, in non, in non, -dash, non dimensional form here. Huh? And, okay. and, and for the explaining what is the relationship between the heat transfer coefficient h and the velocity u infinity. Otherwise, no theoretical outcome can be obtained. Yeah. Right, right, right. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, uh, this is this is a very difficult derivation and it's very valuable so that I have so many questions on this okay and uh it's okay if you cannot answer it um all right so so i have two other questions regarding the sensors then uh yeah uh, okay so the first one is the the response time because you you are doing a steady state assumption and also uh, everything based on that so you are assuming your sensor response response very fast. Um, the sensor. Uh, yeah. Can you please repeat your question? So if you want to measure the response time of your sensor, how would you do that? Uh, so. For uh, for measuring the response time, we uh, yeah. we note the time duration uh, while we uh, we record the time duration at which point we can see the sensitivity change uh, in value. 
Okay. So how how fast it can uh, in in what time duration or time period we see the changes in the uh, we so see far, the so changes. far sorry so far he only do the DC measurement right he only right. do the DC measurement he, he never done the AC measurement if you if Rashmi need to Rashmi if you need I I mean Professor Sir's question is if you uh, give a uh, AC temper for example AC velocity input AC velocity input with some frequency characteristic, and uh, you can can do a sensor pick up the AC behavior. Uh, something like that. You okay. need to yeah give some, but 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 sometimes it's not it's not easy. Right, I think because it's not an electrical. Our sensor, our physical sensor, uh, our physical signal right now is flow flow speed. It's not the electrical signal, so not easy to. Build up uh, uh, not easy to build up, but but maybe um, yeah, I, I yeah, maybe, maybe Professor, you can, you can ask your question more clearly. Yeah, even me, I, I cannot really understand your question. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I know it's very difficult to measure response time of flow sensor, uh -huh. especially you, you have to do it uh, inside your wind tunnel. Right, and that's almost impossible to. to for example, <laughs> it's very yeah. difficult to suddenly stop, suddenly stop the flow. Right, I right. I totally agree. I just like to ask challenging questions during the <laughs> to stimulate your thinking. So my <laughs> last question would be: uh, How would you evaluate the effect of temperature, ambient temperature, on your sensor? Um, for our theoretical calculation, we have taken uh, the normal room temperature, 25 degree Celsius. But during while performing the experiments, the real experiments, uh, it is not the 25 degree Celsius every time. We do experience uh, colder than that or a hotter temperature than that. Right. You know, it's going to change your offset from time to time if the yes. temperature changes. Yes, Professor. But you cannot cal calibrate your sensor right? when when you put it on site. And then yeah. the temperature changes all of a sudden. What can you do? Yeah, sometimes I observe uh, the change in uh, output voltage due to different uh, environmental temperature. Right. So so how well did you control your wind tunnel's temperature? Uh, wind, wind tunnel doesn't have any temperature control. We can only control the flow speed of the wind. Exactly. So could that be a noise uh, source of your experiment? Because some of your your, your data points deviates from your linear regression. Y yes, Professor, there is presence of some noise. Right, so maybe you could blame that deviation from the temperature or something else, but uh, it's better to ch explain more on, the, on those deviations. Okay, Professor, I will explain more about the deviation due to the temperature difference in the environmental setup. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm just making an example. But, uh, yeah, don't you can discuss that uh, with Professor Yang afterwards. Okay, okay, Professor. Okay, okay, all right, I I'm good. Thanks. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for your questions and suggestions. Okay, thank you, thank you, Professor. Actually, <coughs> yeah, actually, Professor, uh, uh, he asked many questions uh, regarding with some basic mechanics. Uh, basic mechanics very important. And also, he uh, mentioned some, something important about the measurement. You need to be very aware, uh, uh, should be very careful about that. Okay. Yes, okay. Professor. Uh, so, in the next, uh, uh, can we uh, ask the Professor Su or Professor Yang, our, yeah. To ask question. 
Uh, uh, Professor Young, can can I first? Okay, okay, please. Okay, please. okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, because my uh, research is in the field of the uh, circuits, so uh, could you uh move to the page uh thirty 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 four about the amplifier? Okay. Hello. Yes, Professor. I have moved to uh, page number thirty-four. Yeah, about the amplify. Uh, no, no. Um, uh, sorry. Previous, this. Uh, previous, yes, yes. Yeah, this one. Okay. Yes, uh, I, 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 um, I have a question about uh, if the uh for the gain and for the gain too small, it will affect the accuracy of the your four DG value. So if the voltage gain, yeah, you will gain it too small. Okay. Yeah, we uh, affect 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 your accuracy of the voltage value when you sense sense the difference. Um, with this thirty dB gain, we can see some uh, ten times better sensitivity uh, of our original design of the flow sensor which uh, didn't use any amplifier circuit. Um, yes. But during the measurement, as I have mentioned, the instrumentation amplifier gives around 30 dB gain, but in the actual performance uh, by integrating the flow sensor and IA on the uh, wind tunnel, uh, we could see some 20 dB gain according to the sensitivity output we could observe uh, some decrease in gain. Yes, yeah, um, if you again is too small, maybe uh, some uh, voltage gain error will be occurred. So it uh, will uh, affect uh, your uh, measurement results. Okay, so okay. you need to um, uh, take care. Uh, you need to calculate the gain and the bandwidth of your amplify according to your system. It's better for you, um, uh, future work. Okay. Okay, professor. Uh, okay, and uh, another uh, uh, suggest uh, just uh, could you provide the measurement result to compare published related works with the pre uh, with, with the proposed system, uh, like your flow sensor, because from your thesis, I I don't see. Uh, about uh, uh, the comparison result with other uh, works. Can you provide this? Yeah, uh, I have uh, mentioned a table in the introduction section where it is not. It is not just the flow sensor comparison there. It may include some st stress sensor, pressure sensor, uh, but yes, I, I would like to put some particular comparison uh, regarding the flow sensor uh, testing. Yes, and and yes, um, other uh, other people, other research group. They used uh, they used to design the calorimetric flow sensor that used a heater aside, whereas we have not used a heater in our design. We just used a voltage divider circuit um, for our design. Um, yes, but I, I would further extend some explanation in my thesis about comparing the result with the other research groups result uh, in this field of flow sensor. OK, thank you. Uh, I have no problem. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. OK, finally, uh, uh, please, uh, uh, we uh, invite invite Professor Su to ask a question. Professor Su. Uh, OK. Uh, uh. Uh, I have several questions uh, in the comments. And uh, the first of all is uh, um, um, uh, okay. We, we we talk about this 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 slider. Okay, this page. Okay, I I think uh, maybe the your your measurement result and the simulation result have a big difference. Maybe come from the uh, 
you can see that the in this 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 instrumentation amplifier architecture the gain is is proportional to is depend on the the ratio between resistors. Yeah. So uh, uh, for example, you if you uh, you can see that here is a five five hundred kilo ohm resistor here, and also have one kilo ohm resistor here. So if you if you use the same type of resist resistor, that, that means the 500 kilo ohm uh, resistor will occupy a lot, a uh, huge, uh, a, 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 a much area than the one kilo ohm. That, but uh, we know that uh, the, in the semiconductor processing, we have the process variation. So maybe that uh, your five, five, 500 kilo ohm uh, is not exactly the 500 kilo ohm. Maybe there will be a, lot, a huge variation because this 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 is uh this uh resist, re resistor uh, occupy a huge uh, um, uh, a, a, a large uh, area that may cause to a big uh, a big process variation yeah maybe yeah so uh, but but i think uh it's your your first time to design a uh, active circuit so it i i think you do very well uh, in 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 our in in my in my lab, uh, the student need uh, to to training maybe need uh, uh, several months can to finish this this work. I think uh, yeah, you 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 do well, but uh, but if you want to do to uh, do better in the uh, active search design, you you need to maybe you 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 need to 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 uh, spend more time. Yeah yeah okay okay and um, so so and. Um, uh so so uh and uh uh uh, uh, uh i think le, le, uh, another question is that uh, another, uh, another comment comment is that i think you have a uh, some mi misunderstanding about the uh, uh snr uh, uh yeah because uh um uh, real circuit cannot improve snr because circuit Circuit can use to real circuit uh, or amplify can amplify uh, your, your the the uh, the output voltage of your sensor, but can uh, but uh, the amplify also contribute the noise. So so real real amplify uh, cannot improve SNR. The, 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 the real amplify only uh, degrade your answer SNR. Yeah, because. Because the signal, uh, the signal, so SNR, uh, uh, for example, the SNR of, of your your sensor uh, output maybe, uh, for example, is it maybe is uh, thirty dB, for example, and uh, uh, but your circuit when you, when your circuit when you use you use real circuit to amplify the the signal, uh, the the real circuit also contribute the noise, so. So the output SNR uh, of a uh, real circuit only only can only degrade your your SNR cannot improve your SNR. The, uh, so so amplify only used to amplify your signal stress. Oh yeah okay. So, so uh, okay so that I think that if if you if you think that amplify can can improve SNR is is a uh, is uh, is a uh, misunderstanding yeah. Okay, so uh, you do know what I mean. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, so 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 amplify only only degree your uh, So, uh, but it can can improve your signal stress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so uh uh because uh, uh can you go to the page uh for uh let me see the page uh forty two. Yeah, 42, uh, 42, yeah, okay. I think you can see that your major result is not a uh, uh, mono, mono, uh, mononomial, yeah. It's, um, you can see, you can see that uh, uh, as the wind speeds increase, yeah. So you output the voltage in, it's not a uh, uh, moto, moto, uh, monotonous, monotonous, yeah. So, I, I don't know why that, uh, for example, that uh, at the wind speed of three, 
uh, meters per second, uh, your your output voltage is is boost up. So I, I don't know I don't know why, but but I I, I think uh, because the um, in in the in in uh uh in uh, your amplifier you you used uh, because we implement uh, uh by by most transistor. And the most transistor have a, a serious problem is about the thicker noise. So uh, most transistors have big thicker noise. So uh, uh, and uh, your your uh, the, the the frequency of your wind speed is very low. So I think that maybe the maybe the the noise of the amplifier will affect your major measurement accuracy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. It, uh, so uh, there, there, uh, there are some others uh, 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 instrumentation amplifier design that is no uh, uh, low noise low to uh, to remove the for example the like trapper trapper modulation amplifier or other amplifier can uh, review remove the thicker noise of MOS. Uh, so uh, for, uh, 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 if you you implement your amplifier using BZT bipolar transition. But by uh, transistor, there will be no uh, problem of uh, frequency noise. It's okay, but uh, but uh, most most transistor have a uh, very uh, very large uh, frequency noise. Yeah. Okay. It, that's my comment. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, last question. Uh, I'm wondering that your your uh, your in your sensor your polysilicon resistor is. Because the foundry provide P plus poly and M plus poly, which yeah. kind of poly you use? I use you P use. plus poly. Uh, why you use P plus not M plus poly? Yeah. Do you have any considerations? Um, because of the, uh, I believe because because of the. Yeah. Uh, because um, because M plus poly and P plus poly have different temperature coefficient. Yeah. Yes, so it has different, it's different coefficients. Yeah. I I different. I choose the one which has two point uh two point seven nine exponential minus three per degree uh per degree change of temperature uh that polysilicon I have considered. Okay. Okay. So okay. Okay. So okay. That's my questions. Uh, thank you. Thank. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your suggestion. Okay. Uh, regarding uh, your previous question, huh? Uh, I want to ask uh, Rashmi, huh? Regarding the the frequency gain measure uh, in your uh, uh, instrumentation amplifier, please, please change to that page, okay? Uh, you gain gain measurement. Yeah, this this curve. So can you explain why uh, you your measurement uh, frequency only started from take 10, 10 k hertz? Why not uh, started from DC? Um, you mean from from lower frequency? Why yeah. didn't start? Yeah, because oh. our application uh, to our flipping wind. Is low frequency domain, not a high frequency domain. Yeah. So I just wonder, uh, right now the uh, the gain value at the 10 k hertz is uh, is, up, is about 30 hertz, uh, about 30 dB now. But maybe if we drop to the uh, 10 hertz, uh, our flapping yeah. wind 10 hertz, uh, maybe the gain value will change again. Yeah. Um, so, at at lower uh, frequency, there was there was a noise. I mean, like the amplitude 
consist of uh, some distortion. So at 10 kilohertz, uh, we could measure, uh, we could see the amplitude um, in the uh, cathode ray oscill oscilloscope very clearly. At 10 kilohertz, uh, from from that in in that case, we have started measuring from 10 kilohertz frequency. So you you mean that below 10 10 k hertz, this amplifier. Uh, I mean, the gain of this amplifier is not kept at 30 dB. It will drop, or some sometimes drop, sometimes going up, like that. Yeah, the gain might be different for the lower frequency reason, but uh, in order to observe the amplitude clearly, we started from 10 kilohertz. Uh, at low, at we could not see the amplitude um, at lower frequency range more in um, in more appropriate way. There was some uh, noise included. Uh, even even the noise is very apparent, but you, you you can still try to measure try to measure the deep the the gain value. It, it, this is very important, you know. Maybe this phenomena may be strongly related with your, uh, you know, flapping wing experiment. Like Professor Si, he asked, why, why your data are not in a monotone, monotonical change, right? Some sometimes fluctuate, fluctuate very much. Maybe it's due to, uh, because our flapping wing is right now is AC, right? we are AC input AC velocity input to your system. So maybe you will uh, you amplify maybe uh, have, have, have worse the gain during the flapping. So sometimes it's worse, sometimes better. So maybe we'll cause uh, fluctuation output. Right? Like you like, like, like the that's the result in, in what in page what 42 have i forgot yeah yes bro. right so you can see you can see your voltage versus with speed right now fluctuate it's not the uh not not the nonlinear curve you know uh, but it fluctuate fluctuate maybe sometimes maybe due to your forces maybe due to your amplifier yeah so so if you can try to confirm the frequency response at uh, the viewer amplify more detail and tell to the low frequency domain maybe can tell us something uh, we we are not clear now, right now okay bro. <coughs> uh, Mr. Yang, hey, uh... I, I, I would suggest that uh, maybe uh, this we can use a uh, uh, commercial chip, a uh, commercial IC, and uh, 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 maybe we, we can use a uh, low noise uh, OP and uh, OP and uh, to, to uh, 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 realize uh, 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 amplify to measure again. Yes. Okay. So you, you suggest to use the commercialized uh, yeah, 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 yeah. operation, can, operation uh, amplifier or instrumentation yeah, amplifier. Yes. Try to do the same can, work again. Try to do real comparison. Yeah, okay. Try to figure out if this phenomenon is yes. existed over there or not. Okay. Yes, because we can buy some. They are. They, they are. They are in a, in a, We can buy the no no noise open. Hey, yeah. So. Uh, maybe you now uh, uh, and use we can have we use three open and uh, we can to uh, compose the uh, 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 instrumentation amplifier and uh, do the major again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank yeah. you, first. Uh, so, 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 first, me please uh, then, uh, try to write down all the question, uh, the, the review yep. and I'm, the post, and yep. try to modify, huh? In your in your finalized uh, manuscript. Yes, professor. Okay. Yeah, I can also because we have recorded online video. I think I can also listen again 
anyways, I have written down the questions. I can also uh, yeah, listen once again and then analyze the questions and the suggestions, uh, the valuable suggestions uh, mentioned by the committee members. And uh, Rajmi, can, can you even more describe something about about the packaging? Packaging. Right, you have ever show, you have ever tried to use your own uh, package? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you're doing the, the, pack, the, the, the wire bounding outside and try to do the measurement. Why not keep doing that? Um, due to the electrostatic discharge problem, the, the outside package uh, wasn't able to successfully uh, perform the expected uh, test. So in future, if possible, um, we should try to know more about the electrostatic discharge problem during the packaging of the uh, IC. If if this problem is sorted out, then we can even use more lighter packaging for the uh, flapping wing micro air vehicle test uh, of the lift and thrust measurement because uh, currently even the package which is available in the TSRI UMC is uh, more uh, it has more weight compared to the flexible uh, PCB board that I have designed. The only problem that I have faced is that after the wire bonding the, uh, the, the chip could not function due to the electrostatic discharge uh, problem that arises during the wire bonding. OK, so try to try to explain more detail about this. If, if it is you have if the future work, please mention that precisely. OK, um, OK, and, and one more question is about your self heating flow sensor design. Can you go back to the page similar to Professor Sivan Bean, he asked you. Yeah, yeah, OK. Uh, actually, uh, about this question, uh, uh, our theoretical model is only one dimensional, only one dimensional model. Uh, maybe not, not, maybe not exactly true. Uh, uh, so maybe you need to for example, you need to add uh, a two-dimensional model by, by by a simulation code. Uh, for example, through an uh, ANSYS or console, try to figure out if this one-dimensional re uh, thermal resistor model is reasonable or not. Uh, because okay. because the one-dimensional model show very nonlinear behavior, very very nonlinear behavior. We have many many assumption and uh, the behavior very nonlinear compared to your output voltage seem not justified. Oh, so maybe maybe a uh, two dimensional model simulation model may be necessary uh, mm -hmm. in your finalized thesis. OK, Professor. Uh, two dimensional, yeah. Um, Actually, I can I can tell to all the professor here. Uh, when you do when Rashmi he she do, she did the experiment. Uh, he tear up, she tear up the flow sensor with sixty degree. So you can see there is an angle theta here. The theta actually if less than sixty degree, no signal can be output. Something like here, you can see. So there's a there's an incline angle, incline angle over there. No incline angle, huh? no no signal output, no signal output. So you mean that <clears throat> the package uh, influence the uh, local flow very much, yeah. influence the local flow very much. Yeah. Uh, in the winter now, okay, if the winter now give give you a uh, five meter per second velocity. 
but when he approached to the flow sensor due to his package, special package, uh, maybe uh, the local speeds will, will change to very less. Maybe very, very less. So uh, is also the reason why we cannot measure the low speed measurement. For the low speed measurement due to the confinement effect about the flow sensor package, maybe not no flow, no, 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 no local flow around the sensor chip. So so maybe just may need to mention about that. Okay. Yes, Professor, I will mention. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I just asked. I, uh, I just uh, is there any quest other question from from our committee member? Uh, Professor Wen Bin Su, any other question? No, I'm all good. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Professor Jinan Dai, Dai Jinan, Dai Lao Si. My question. My own day. My own day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm okay. Okay. Oh, that. Yang Yang Wen Bin. Hey, my my own day. My own day. Okay. Okay. Ah, that Huang Yan Lao Si. No problem. No problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. 那如果没有问题的话，我们就先停在这边。我们啊 ，So the resume you pre, uh, uh, you you left you left the uh, yeah you you yeah you please uh, turn off the uh, your microphone and speaker temporary. Uh, we want to have a discussion. Okay. Uh, then okay. Then if it's an easier way, you just left the classroom. Okay. okay you leave the left classroom. Uh, after, do I need to come after a certain minutes? Sure, sure, sure. You need to come. I, I, I will call you by line. Uh, maybe I will, you, I will call you by line. Uh, you can call uh, another person. Sure, sure, sure. sure. I, 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 I do not have the phone right now, so um, you can I call see, Chandu. See. You can call Chandu. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, I see. Professor, thank you. I will go outside the classroom. Thank you. Thank you, all the committee members. Do we do we call the Guan Diao? Ah, 